what we are seeing is, uh, say, something unique in my lifetime. Um, from my perspective, ethically, I think this is a time in which we are seeing community rights and interests, the well-being of communities taking proper priority. And I think there will be some very interesting lessons to learn from that as the pandemic moves on about how we work together cooperatively and collaboratively and, and, and what role rights have, both collective rights and individual rights have in that process. And I, and I think there'll be some very interesting reflections on that. There can be a danger in, because it's viral, because it's obviously a medical event, of saying that we need to focus and concentrate on medical responses and medical understandings, when of course this this event is going to probably fundamentally change all of our lives uh, for a short period of time, and 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 it may change our lives substantively in the long run as well. So there's an awful lot riding on this. It's much more than just a medical event. when you think so many different kinds of rights are engaged, I mean, one of the things that the government is focusing on is trying to flatten the pandemic and to increase available health resources so that if people become seriously ill and they need respiratory support, it's available for them. But in doing that, they have to they have to challenge other rights. They have to they have to put other rights under pressure, such as liberty rights, freedom of association rights. Um, a whole host of other kinds of rights have to come under pressure, because there are issues like right to life engaged. So there is a very good question about how you know to what extent are those restrictions, those serious restrictions on individual freedoms, legitimate. <clears throat> But where the public interest is strong enough and people recognise that public interest, then it seems to me appropriate that those those rights should be constrained. But it's going to be difficult and it's particularly going to be difficult as it develops, as it, if it goes on for a long period of time. But what we're seeing is this extraordinarily complex attempt by governments to balance different kinds of rights and and different countries with different kinds of rights type traditions uh, different kinds of moral traditions are approaching it in different directions it's an extraordinary an extraordinary thing to be witnessing I think there are times during a pandemic where it is ethically legitimate, morally legitimate. It's coherent with human rights approaches, which is that you say in order to address a particularly serious threat to human individual and social well-being, it's appropriate in some circumstances to say we are going to move towards a more utilitarian approach, ensuring the well-being of populations, and that can take some kind of priority over individual rights to treatment in certain circumstances, but it's only contingent upon resources. It's a resource issue. It's only when resources are overwhelmed that you would begin to be forced to make those kinds of choices. I mean, in terms of workers' rights, for example, I mean, one of the organisations I work for, the British Medical Association, are, are pushing very hard at the government to say, you need to make appropriate protective equipment available for all health workers. And that's a way in which you see a professional association and trade union locking horns with the government to say, we accept the importance of meeting health need, but doctors and other health professionals also have health, health rights. They also have rights to appropriate protection. So again, you'll see different organisations in civil society pushing back and saying, "Hold on a second, you know, there are there are this is this is a complex interplay of rights here."
In those circumstances, what you will need is to engage with established, um, clinically up-to-date and ethically robust protocols for resource allocation of life-saving treatment in the face of overwhelming need. You know, in 20, 30 years of working in medical ethics, I've thought about this quite a lot. This is the first time I've ever seen it really come into, potentially come into play. Nobody wants to be making these decisions, but there are times when, if resources are seriously finite, factors such as a patient's ability to benefit rapidly from the resource will come into play. So, but again, the only justification for that is when the demand on resources seriously outstrips available resources. And then you simply have to ask the question, who shall we treat? All hospitals, all trusts will have in place escalation protocols. Big, you know, whether or not it's a major accident, a terrorist outrage, a, a, an airplane crash. Now we have we have obviously uh, uh, the coronavirus. 2009, we saw a pandemic, but it was extremely mild and none of these considerations came into play. Yes, there is ethical guidance out there. Yes, there are organisations, links and bodies working on it. Uh, the priority is going to be maximising resources at the moment and flattening the pandemic. But there are ethical ethical resources out there to meet these needs, yes. In the absence of sufficient testing, you have insufficient knowledge. And therefore, you can't make informed decisions. You don't understand what the background infection rates are. And as you say, yes, if you have a health professional that is presenting with symptoms like coronavirus and you can't test them, then they are going to have to isolate themselves. If you can test them and say no, then that person doesn't have to isolate themselves and they don't have to step back from frontline treatment. In these circumstances, it tends to be the case that the interests of patients, the rights of patients, if you like, take priority. Medicine is focused on delivering benefits to patients, so the priority is the interest, the rights of patients. But that doesn't mean to say that doctors don't have some rights. They have rights to appropriate protection, for example. They have rights for their employers to take appropriate action to manage risks to them. They have um, rights of clinical judgment, for example. So it, it's a question, I mean, patient rights will take priority because that is the focus of medical concern. But that doesn't mean to say that doctors simply relinquish all their rights or sacrifice all their own uh, all their own human rights in that context. But in a pro in a professional context, the focus tends to be on on properly on the on the, on the well-being of patients.